In this video, we go over the layout of Ableton Live and important settings for DJs. All of that, coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. So here's Ableton Live. You hear about tons of DJs and producers using it to both make beats, do DJ edits, do tons of things. Super powerful piece of software and at the same time it's very daunting when looking at it. I would say that Ableton is unlike any DAW or digital audio workstation that you can find on the computer for both Mac and PC. Different from Reason, Pro Tools, Logic, Fruity Loops, etc. Has a look on its own and functions in ways that only Ableton functions. So here's a brief overview of the layout of Ableton Live and settings and preferences from the DJ's perspective and things that would be important from looking at it in that way. So first off, this is the screen that you'll see the first time you open Ableton. Right here on your left side, you'll see the categories, which consist of sounds, drums, instruments, audio effects, mini effects, uh, Max for Live, plugins, clips, samples, and places. The defaults will be packs, user library, and current project. And to the right of that, you get the different things you can select from each of these uh, items on the left hand side. So for instance, sounds, these are from the Ableton library, you get different categories and you can open those up and see what's in there, as well as instruments. These are the different instruments that you can find in Ableton Live, samplers, synthesizers, etc. Effects, of course, pretty explanatory. Audio effects that you can find. And the rest of these are pretty specific to live. Right here, and this, this is pretty much the main window of live, you'll see the tracks. So this first track is uh, an audio track, and the second one is a MIDI track. An audio track is where you would drag in a file like an MP3 or a WAV file. A MIDI track is where you would drag in an instrument and play notes out and create a song. <clears throat> Down here at the bottom, is where you can find more information about any instruments you load or samples you load. So for instance, on this MIDI track, I'm gonna go ahead and load a drum rack, which is basically a drum machine. And right here, you can see that this pops up and these are like the pads on the MPC. So let's go ahead and load in a drum sound real quick. Just any random drum sound, let's see. Let's do a clap. So as you can see, the more I add to this track, the more you see down here that adds on. So it'll start from the left and work to the right. So right here, I added my clap sample. And there you go. So you see the sampler section after you add the sample. And at the same time, if I want to add effects, I can go in my audio effects, add something like a ping pong delay, which you see gets added to the right side. And now, you get the delay effect. <clears throat> the same thing can be done by just adding straight samples to an audio track. So for instance, if I take the same clap sample and drag it up here to the main window, I can open this up and now I can see this sample in whole. And if I hit play, I can hear the sample play out. So. That's the basic difference between audio and MIDI tracks. Audio tracks, you get to see this view of the sample and more detail of whatever audio is loaded here. On MIDI tracks, you get to see more of the instrument and details about the instrument and different parameters that you can tweak. So let's go back to this sample right here. This view, as a DJ, this is where you're gonna spend a lot of your time because this is where you can get deep down and tweak the audio and make it sound any way you want, basically. So right here in this section, you have the volume for the sample. You have this transpose knob, which basically is like a pitch knob, right? So 
I can pitch the sample up. I can pitch the sample down. Or I can just have it play at, the, at its normal pitch. Next to this is where Ableton Lab is most powerful. In, this is where you warp audio. I'll go into detail in warping later on in another video. It's kind of a science on its own and learning how to warp very fast and precisely and accurately is one of the most important things you can do as a DJ in Ableton Live. To the right of that, you can see the start and end points of the sample. So think of the start point as a cue point, right? So if I want the sample to play from the very beginning, I can move this arrow here. If I want to play it later in the sample, I can move it here. I notice that this number changes as I move this along. Same thing about the end point, where I can have the sample end real short or I can let it play out all the way. And for things like loops, if I load in like a 8 bar drum loop, I can go ahead and loop this up down here as well. And that's handled in this section down here. So, like I stated previously, as a DJ, you're going to be dealing more in audio than MIDI tracks in Ableton Live. So getting a grasp of how these controls work and what each one of these do is very important. I'll go ahead and go into detail about this in depth in later videos in this series, but I just want to give you a brief overview of what these sections are. So from here, let's go into the preferences of Ableton Live. So here's the preferences window in Ableton. You'll see different categories on the left-hand side, much like here. The ones you want, really want to look for as a DJ and ones that you really need to make sure are correct I'll go here straight to the audio section. This buffer size right here can be important. If you notice that your clipping audio or it's cutting in and out, you might want to increase the buffer size. If you notice there's like a lag or if you have a bunch of tracks running and they're kind of running out of time when from when you're hitting play, you might want to lower this. Play around with it. Depending on how many effects you have on your track or how many instruments you have on MIDI tracks, uh, this can be the deciding factor if the whole project will work or not. So buffer size under the audio tab is very important. Next, I would look at your sample rate. 44.1 is pretty standard. You can go up to 96, but in all actuality, 44.1 or 96 will be fine. Uh, these two, you don't really see that often. Uh, now with most modern softwares, uh, I mean, having 9600 is, or 96,000, I'm sorry, is great. But if the audio you're bringing in isn't 96 from the beginning, you're not really going to gain any audio quality. So there's kind of a myth about that. If, it's, if you already have a 44 one piece of audio but then you save it up as a 96 that it somehow becomes a better file it doesn't the audio doesn't get better none of that gets better so that's also a reason why make sure that you bring in high quality audio from the beginning so from there we can go up above here here's your audio devices right now I'm running this straight off my laptop with no uh, audio interface I imagine that most DJs on the go, this is how they're going to run their setup. So just make sure you know built-in output is what you have selected. Uh, either that, or if you're running into say like headphones or whatever, that they'll be the same plugin. You see Soundflower down here. Uh, this is for recording audio from the computer, say recording samples off of um, the internet somewhere you find. Um, I'll go into detail about how to use this later on. Just remember that built-in output is what you want for the output if you're just using this on your laptop on the go by itself. And as far as input devices, I have no device selected right now, but you can, of course, use whatever audio inputs you have. So a built-in microphone on some MacBooks, you'll have an audio input. So that can be found here. So next, here, this is a new feature to the latest uh, update to Ableton, Ableton 9.7. They added uh, Ableton Link support, which I described in a previous video on how to use it with software such as Serato and available on Tractor as well and many other apps. So this will go ahead and toggle the link 
support on the left-hand side, if you can see that right here, to show or hide it. Link's a great tool I'm very excited about and going to be digging into a more detail about how to use Link in further videos. And this is how you use it and how you turn it on or make it visible in Ableton Live. Underneath that is the MIDI section where you'd look up MIDI or where you'd see all your MIDI devices uh, hooked up. Not very important for DJs that are just doing edits or working in audio. This is more if you're trying to make beats, um, remixes, etc. So for the next section, we have the file folder section. I like having the create analysis files automatically on. Um, just so if you're working with audio and you do a lot of edits to it, as far as like warping and such, all of that stuff can be saved. So I, I like having that on as well. This one right up, right up above, save current set as default, is can be very helpful. So say you have a certain setup that you always end up using with different effects or different numbers of tracks and stuff that you want to have open every time you open Ableton Live so you don't have to put everything back in order. You can go ahead and save this right here. So whatever you have open, as far as samples, instruments, effects, and tracks, all get saved. And it'll be your default every time you open Ableton. Very helpful. I have one set up for my computer that I do my production on. I have one set up for my computer that I do most of my edits on. Very helpful. Saves me a ton of time. And nothing is more important than saving time, especially like when you're on the go or say, you have to do an edit real quick on a plane or at the gig. Super fast, super easy, great way to save some time. Next up, we have the record warp launch section and the preferences. This holds a couple preferences that are really important to DJs, including uh, this right here, file types. So whatever you record into Ableton, whether you're doing like recording a quick drop or anything like that, any audio that's recorded, you can automatically pick if you want it to be saved as WAV or AIFF including the bit depth. Also, one of the most important things to me, this is the most important part as a DJ, to have this set up correctly. So I always have this warp fade section set up this way with warp loop short samples on auto, auto warp long samples on off. This one is especially crucial. And this one as well, default warp mode. You want this set to complex. This is gonna be the most flexible way of how you're doing your edits, if you're doing like intro edits or doing blends, bootlegs. Complex is pretty much the way you're gonna to wanna to go most of the times. These different warp modes are important in other ways and using them creatively, but for stretching audio and making it do what you need it to do, Complex is gonna be the way to go. Sometimes Complex Pro is a better option, but that's not a default option for warp modes, only complex because complex pro can be very taxing on a on the CPU on the com actual computer. So to access complex pro, you're gonna have to go down here in the actual sample and select it. It has its pluses and minuses. Um, I mean, it does have better sound quality, but at the same time, there's certain aspects of regular complex that are great as well that you don't get out of complex pro. So be sure to keep that in mind. And that pretty much wraps up this intro onto the layout and the preferences for a DJ as far as Ableton Live is concerned. So that's it for the layout and important preferences for DJs in Ableton Live. So question of the day, what warping mode do you use when using Ableton Live? Do you use Complex or Complex Pro? And what benefits do you see in using one or the other? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And thank you for watching P.TV, where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.